Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Grand Rock's Product Knowledge Seminar on Allen Block. Uh, this is the first eight. This is the first of eight installments of our Product Knowledge Seminar classes we will be hosting. Up on the screen right now is uh, the scheduled dates for the next PK seminar classes. So, um, for your information, I do want to state that we are recording this event for future references. Uh, for those who don't know me, let me introduce myself. My name is Ernie. I am a sales associate here at Granite Rock. I will be your MC and host of the day. Uh, my job today as the MC is to help us navigate this meeting and make sure we are in the right place at the right time. If you have any questions during the presentation, please add them to the chat section in Microsoft Teams and we will answer as many as possible when we have time uh, to make the most of everyone's time and to stay on schedule we may have to limit the number of questions that will be answered live if there are any lingering questions we will attempt to get those answered to you along with a survey upon completion of today's session uh, for this program we are asking everyone to keep themselves muted and your cameras off the chat is now open and we encourage questions or comments throughout the meeting uh, firstly, I would like to thank everybody for attending today. Today's PK seminar is on Allen Block. Today we have Chad Julius from Allen Block and Scott, Scott Julian from Calstone. Uh, both of these gentlemen have been working for 20 years in their own respected companies. Um, from here on out, I will let Chad Julian take over for the presentation and he will do the introduction for Allen Block. Thanks, Ernie. Appreciate the time on this. I'm going to go ahead and, and share my screen at this point uh, so you get a little bit of a background of, of where we're going. So at this time, you guys should be able to see my screen. Um, and really, thank you. Appreciate the opportunity being part of the Granite Rock Product Knowledge Seminar. A little bit about the two companies and, and hence why you got Allen Block and Calstone on the same screen here, because in essence, we are production partners and we've been doing this for a very long time. Allen Block uh, has been in business for over 30 years. In fact, we're one of the founding members of segmental retaining walls and using dry cast concrete products for that material uh, for the retaining walls. And we are worldwide. We've got a production partner uh, network that is second to none. We've got over 40 companies here just in North America and then another 30 overseas. So it is kind of fun being part of a company where you're taking a, a product and providing those tools, services, and resources to help grow opportunities. And, and I feel like that's where Allen Block really shines. It's uh, yes, we've we, we got a great product, uh, but it's really the support that you're going to get. And, and part of that support, actually a major part of that support is Calstone. Uh, so if you think of Calstone and Allen Block in, in one beat, uh, you're in the same uh, you're in, in good company because unbeatable quality since 1947 and, and Scott's been with them for over 20 years now and they've invested in that company. They got state-of-the-art manufacturing. The color blends that they have are phenomenal and, and as I mentioned, long history with uh, the two companies. In fact, they were one of the first production partners we signed outside of Minnesota. So our corporate headquarters is in Minnesota here and that's where I find myself today. So the wonderful things about doing these things virtual. Uh, but if you look at it, April 9th, of 1990 is when Calstone became a production partner of ours and they hit the ground running. They've got over 13 million units installed and in the ground, so a lot of success. So as I mentioned, you're in good company in Northern California uh, with the, the team there at Calstone. And, and I know Scott's going to really jump in in the question and answers. And he, you know, he, he knows in the interest of time, he's going to kind of work on the chats. And so if you guys ask questions, you're going to probably be hearing from Scott a lot of it throughout the, the chat room. He's going to help me out and, and be kind of the, the the man behind the scenes, but then he's going to activate his camera and, and we're going to kind of do the question and answers uh, towards the end of this as we go through. But I've got a couple goals for you guys this year or this this seminar. One of the things is just kind of introduce you to the product lines. And yeah, we can focus on the products themselves and it's eight by 18 and all these dimensionals, but really I want to give you some tips and tricks and how you deliver to the customer needs and wants. And what are they What are they really looking for? And how do you prioritize uh, your quotes and submittals to them? Because I know as the dealers there at Granite Rock and even as contractors that are on this, this session, you guys have different things that you've got to kind of satisfy when that homeowner comes into, comes into the equation. And then at the 
end of this, we're going to talk about a plan, design, build approach to make sure every project you work on is successful. So I am going to introduce some basic installation techniques with our products, and I'm hoping to do that all in about 40 minutes. And so uh, set, to, set the timer and we're going to get off to the races here. But I will start with the products and you will notice with the Allen Block collections or with the Allen Block, we've got collections. We call it the AB collections or the Europa collections. And I got to admit, the AB collection is our workhorse. So if you've used Allen Block or sold Allen Block, it's probably something out of this collection. And we're going to get into the product lines, but we do have the Europa collection. And the Europa is similar shapes, even some beautiful colors, uh, but it gives you a different aesthetic blend to them. Now, a couple collections that are on our website at allenblock.com. And so you might have um, homeowners coming in or uh, and even some of the contractors coming in because they've been to our website. It's called the Aztec and even the Fieldstone. These are non-split products and they're pretty new for us. And so we're just kind of introducing Introducing them into select markets and Calstone is, is is not on board yet and I don't mean that in a bad way because they've gone through a lot of transitions as far as manufacturing and stuff like that so what I want to do is just give you a heads up is that if somebody comes in and asks for the Allen Block Aztec or the Allen Block Fieldstone they're grabbing that information from our website but work with Scott and the team there at, at Calstone you've got a lot of products with the uh, the AB collection and the Europa collection. But I wanted to give you the two names there because they are out in publication. Now, this is where you guys shine. You guys got a lot of products to, to work with, colors, textures, all that good stuff. You need to marry all that knowledge and help that customer make the best decision possible for that potential project. So you've got sizes, you've got weights, you even have different setbacks or wall batters. I'm gonna get into that in a little bit here. Whether, you know, Allen Block, we got a three, six and 12 degree options uh, depending on what the, the need is. And how does that come into play? Because it's really about providing options to your potential customer. You know, it's no secret when you go into McDonald's, they got all the combo meals up there or they got small, medium, large. They're trying to give that customer options to satisfy that need and want. You can do the exact same thing with the Allen Block product lines. Give your customer potential different options. And maybe it's just a color option. Maybe it's a different pattern. Maybe it's a different aesthetic, but you can give them options. And they always recommend giving your customer three options so that way they don't feel the need to go shop around or go someplace else. And so I always encourage you to guys to always ask qualifying questions and see what is kind of that, that need and want. So let's get into the AB collection. You'll notice that the full size units here, that's the AB stone classics and verticals, all right? And so when you look at this, it is one of those where it, you've got the, the different setbacks within the full size units. And then you got the modular shapes on the smaller ones down below, the junior, uh, the Jumbo Juniors, the Light Stones, and Junior Lights. And what do I mean by this? Look at the AB Stones. The AB Stones was our workhorse. I gotta admit, when Robert Allen Gravier started Allen Block you know, over 30 years ago, this was the product that we led with. It is a 12 degree setback. And what do I reference there? If I get my laser out, you should be able to see this. You've got from a vertical plane, it basically tips back into the hillside at 12 degrees. And so that gives you a little setback. It gives you some stability uh, along with this. But uh, unfortunately, what that also means is you lose a little real estate. And so you've got that internal stability with that AB stones, but then we get into uh, marrying that up with the, the project requirements. So you can take the exact same look, you know, eight inches tall, 18 inches wide, 12 inches deep, but now we've got the classic, and this is now a six degree setback. And you'll notice, in fact, almost all of your stock, if you've used Allen Block, it's probably the AB Classic or in that six degree realm, because now you got the benefit of a setback. So you've got that stability, but you don't lose all that real estate, that flat buildable land that we're trying to create uh, at the same time. And then when you look at this, you've got the vertical, like Scott's got a project going on right now that's gonna be using the AB vertical where space was a premium. And so it really limits how much that wall tips back into the hillside, but you can see that really, it's not something that we want homeowners to work with. Uh, there's nothing wrong with a vertically built wall, but we also know you don't have that extra stability of when that when it's tips backing into the the soil so for that we usually really uh, let the vertical go to the contractors the guys that have been trained that understands how you can build these walls so you the granite rock guys that are listening to this please steer your customers to that 80 classic when they're looking for that full size unit and you're you're in really good shape 
Now that Jumbo Junior, notice everything else we're going to talk about today is six degrees. So the only the full size units have the different setback options. Everything else is right here, right in the middle. But that Jumbo Junior is a great product. In fact, I'm dressed down a little bit today because I'm working on a dealer display here in Minnesota and we've got a nice curvy wall. And so I'm just using the half length unit right here, that Jumbo Junior, because now instead of 18 inches in length, it's only nine. So you can do some nice tight radiuses and, and really kind of make that landscape um, project really pop with some nice fluid curves. And then we have the half high units. And I got to admit, you know, one of the benefits working at Allen Block Corporate is we get to see trends and patterns throughout the, the nation and, and really around the world. And these half high units are really starting to grow in popularity. We're starting to see people wanting that long linear look, almost like a subway tile. I always kind of look at what are people doing in their, their bathrooms and, and kitchens. And usually that's what they want to kind of bring into that outdoor living room as well and so long and linear is kind of in right now and so that's where these uh, ab light stones comes into play but it's still six degrees so instead of the full eight inches we're now at uh, a four inch in height but it's still the 18 inches in length and, and about that 12 inches deep and then ironically we do have that small little wall uh then you know that quarter size shape uh four inches by nine uh and that so this is something that gives you Kind of the the best of both worlds you get a nice structural wall even if you're starting to build a, a small little i always call it like an ankle ankle biter right the you know small little walls little garden walls edgers that kind of stuff so a few pictures and i just kind of want to resonate here a little bit so the allen block it's got that chamfer on the front lip it's kind of very distinguished and i gotta tell you i get to a picture like this guys and to me this resonates with me um i think uh the wall builders out there the contractors don't get enough credit i mean you look at this picture and it's really the ab classics some caps and some corners so really three blocks shapes and you're building a beautiful wall with its curve with it's got steps and so there is some artistry that goes along with this and and i like i said i don't think the the contractors in our industry get enough credit for it because this is something that most people can't even visualize it's a, a blank slope and you're creating this masterpiece and that's what i love our contractor certification classes that we do kind of really uh, jumping into that proper installation but it's all about making sure you've got the right colors textures that complement what that homeowner is looking for so here's a nice complimentary using again just the ab class nothing more than just that six degree product here's that jumbo junior you know what i love about it is just small little grade changes but you're going to get tired of me even in this short little section that we're going to do today about what proper water management because i gotta admit almost over 75 percent, almost 90 percent of wall failures out there today depending on how you look at the numbers are because of improper water management and i'll touch on that again here uh, but if you know where the water's coming from where it's going to go you're in good shape so i love doing these little features here but i would say one of the benefits because all the products work out on the marketplace but if you want to look at a few a real benefit of the allen block and the, and the product line that we have is notice everything is modular so we can do beautiful patterns and it kind of dresses that wall up. So maybe one of the options you give them is here's your price to move AB classic, beautiful color. But if you want to go a step up, here's the Ashler pattern for you. And so now you can see you can use preset patterns. We do that for estimating for ease of installation because it's basically a roadmap for the contractor to follow. And then also um, stability. We're trying to minimize the vertical seams, but we need the horizontal lines in here for that reinforcement. So we got a two course, two course light, three course, three course light. The only difference between your light pattern and your standard pattern is notice, it's just the three smaller shapes rather than the four shapes. So you notice the light patterns do not have that classic. That comes into play if you truly have a do-it-yourselfer that wants to do this on the weekend and might want to shy away from a block that weighs about 80 pounds. Uh, so you do have that light pattern using the three smaller shapes to do this. But it just creates a whole new look, right? So if I get into a couple pictures here, you'll see that you got the Ashler pattern kind of matching what the building's doing a little bit, kind of dresses that up. Here's a two-tone with a gray and tan. And again, Scott's going to jump in at the end and give you all the beautiful colors that Calstone has. So these are projects around the, uh, from coast to coast that I'm showing you here. But I love the Ashler pattern. It gives you kind of that 
three-dimensional look. So it's not just a flat face. You'll see that the blocks kind of recess a little bit. And a lot of guys love kind of that character that that brings. And I, I, this, to me, this is a beautiful shot of what segmental retaining walls are, are doing. You know, you dig into that hillside, grab that soil, and fill the bottom part here. So you're, in essence, creating that felt, flat, buildable land. And I touched on that once already. And so we're not in the business of selling block. All right. I know you guys there at Granite Rock are in the same business we are. You're, you're out there all about providing opportunities. But we are in the business of providing flat, buildable land, making that outdoor living space, building that driveway possible to that side door access or whatever it is. So it's all about that flat, buildable land. And when you recognize that, that is the need. You know, we're selling them a flat, buildable land. The want is what you're, what they want it to look like, how they want it to function. And that's where you guys come in with the Allen Block product lines and the colors and textures that you have out there. So here, just a few more pictures of the Ashler. Again, giving them some options. Here, this contractor was very clever. I, I love getting contractors involved. They, they think of things that we never even dreamt of, but they had a customer that was price sensitive and you guys might be thinking well every customer is price sensitive but obviously your cost goes up when you do an ashler pattern so you look at this the bulk of that wall is using the classics and they just brought in dashes of ashler to give it that aesthetic charm that that customer was looking for that was the want they just didn't want that 8 by 18 look and they just brought in a few dashes and now the contractor and uh, had the had the job now you'll notice the Europa is very similar to the classics. In fact, I'm gonna speed up here a little bit because it's a lot of the same talking points, but what I like that Calstone does, they antique this in line. And so they've got the same shapes, the full size, the half length, the half, the, the half high and the quarter block, but it's all antiqued in line. So you, we get rid of the chamfers, the machined edges on the sides and they beat it up. And so now you've got more of a tumbled or a, kind of a cobbled look. And yes, we give it some clever names to kind of fit that old world or that European charm. So the Dover is that full size block and you can use that Dover as a standalone product. So when they manufacture these, these are all individually palletized. So you can use a project that if you want to keep your productivity or customer wants to keep it all eight by 18, but with the Dover, they can do that. Obviously you got the same benefit of the Palermo as you do with that half length unit of the junior lights where, um, it's only half length, so you can do those tighter radiuses, but you still get that more of that cobbled look, all right? Barcelona, again, growing in popularity. People like that long linear look, kind of cobbled there. Beautiful, but it's only half the height. And then we still have that little block there of the Bordeaux, and that's only four by nine. All right, so those are the names that if you get into the Allen Block literature, and these are all in our literature, you have uh, available to you. And again, we have the patterns, right? Same shapes, no sense. You will notice that we do give it the Abbey blend instead of just the Ashler pattern, even though they're the exact same patterns. And we, we do that for a reason. Um, you guys there at Granite Rock, if uh, somebody calls you up and says, hey, I'm interested in the AB Abbey blend, you know automatically that they're looking at that tumble product. OK, so it helps streamline the talking points and it helps you guys with that buying decision. So that's the only reason why we changed the name when we went to the Europa, even though they, it's the exact same patterns. And you can kind of see a lot of these pictures are actually from Northern California. Calstone has been very successful with that tumbled system or that antique system. So you can kind of see it just kind of changes the look of that wall. Looks a little bit more natural. And that's what a lot of the customers are looking for. You see the that that tumbled product in there. And I know this is a, a project right there, but we're very comfortable with the size of these projects. In fact, some of the tallest walls we have in the patterns, whether it's Ashler or the Abbey like this, are even 30, almost 40 feet in height. So we're very comfortable with these getting structurally as well. It's not just aesthetics when you're talking about the patterns. Love these pictures when you get into the landscape lighting. To me, whenever we do our contractor certification classes, I actually take a little bit of a sidestep and I talk to the contractors about making sure they're maximizing that potential customer. And, you know, McDonald's, I, maybe I'm just hungry because it's noon hour for me here, but McDonald's, they always ask, do you want fries with that? Do you want a combo with that? To me, landscape lighting are your fries. You always just make sure you just ask because there's very little money you can go ahead and now just make sure that is 
beautiful. A lot of landscape architects not only look at what this project's going to look like during the day, they want to look at it at night too. So that way you've got aesthetics coming and going, as they say. And so don't shy away from that. There's so many LED options. I'm sure you guys have plenty of them there. Uh, take some classes on them as a contractor, even as the counter guys there at Granite Rock. Hopefully may maybe that's one of your PK sessions coming up. But landscape lightings are here to stay. And actually we see it gr uh, growing huge. So that's a little bit about the product line. Right? We try to make sure we've got different collections, different aesthetics, different colors that really kind of satisfy the needs. It's all modular. Um, if you're anything with Allen Block, it's all, no pins, no clips. It's all front lit, so there's not that secondary piece. And by by uh, for, for Pete's sake, uh, for saying, there's no mortar. Uh, even if I've got some contractors on here, you guys get used to putting in some mortar or putting it on a concrete footing. That is not a segment of retaining wall. And if you've got any questions, reach out to the Granite Rock team, reach out to Scott over there and, and let us take you through some of the, the tips and tricks when it comes to building these walls. So how do we position this? Obviously, you've got the AB collection price to move. You can move it up with the Ashler pattern. You've got the Europa, a little bit more of a pricing point because you've got the, that antiquing option there. But then you've got the pattern within that. So Within this, just those two collections, you got plenty of options for your customers. But now I do got to take a little sidestep and talk about one that's brand new and actually exclusive to Northern California. It's called multi wall. Why did we come up with multi wall? Well, everybody's looking for those above grade walls, those little pillars, those little seating walls. And let's face it, when you talk about those, a lot of times you're cutting. Um, they're usually kind of a modular shape and uh, those that are aware of this OSHA definitely has passed some more regulations 1926 that talks about silica dust generation and so the contractors need to be very careful on how they're cutting that block in fact they're encouraged to do the wet saws and the vacuum saws and so we also know cuts cost you some money uh, the cut, cut cost cuts the co cuts cost the contractor and even the homeowner. A lot of homeowners don't like to cut concrete. And so this multi-wall was kind of developed to kind of streamline this. And so we just did a little cost analysis and I actually had a contractor argue with me that it was $5 a, a cut. And I'm like, that's fine. If $5 is your cost, no problem. But the multi-wall is multiple pieces. And what's great is those multiple pieces can function as a retaining wall or even in those above grade walls. So you can just set it back because it's got some depth to it. And then you can actually do some retaining wall or parapet walls, and you can do curves, straight walls, and everything with very little cuts. You just take those different pieces, and you kind of just stack it up. And that's what I really like about this product. And so we're happy to kind of show it great for straight walls. In fact, almost nothing beats it here for straight walls. You kind of locks together. It's a nice, uh, it's got some nice depth and height to it. But you can see here, just off of one pallet, you can grab for the pillars. You can use the smaller units to do the fire pit. You can use the larger units to do the seat wall around the outside and again it's very little cutting all the way through so that is one of those above grade wall options called the multi-wall calstone makes it for allen block and it's really kind of like i said exclusive to you guys there in northern california now i wouldn't be the engineer i am if i wouldn't talk about reinforcement and so when you think about this we know that you're going to have to build these walls a little bit taller than three feet all the time or you're going to be selling projects that are more than two two and a half feet and let's face it if they want to park a car on top of it if it's over a foot and a half they're going to need reinforcement well, let's make it easy right there are biaxial grids on the market that the homeowner or contractor can just roll it out and what i call the drop and kick so they can keep it simple we partnered with a, a grid company and they pre-packaged these in three foot or four foot wide rolls by 50 feet long and you guys have biaxial grid options but it's important for the biaxial grid because it simplifies the installation Yep. Yep. With grid, you got to worry about the grid lengths. You know, how long is it going to be? What is the spacing going to be? Well, let's let's simplify it. Let's take it. We know the grid strength. We know the lengths are going to be. So now we just go down to two core spacing. You stack the block up every two courses and and then we are uh, put the grid every two courses and we're ready to go. And so by doing a biaxial grid, it eliminates one of the potential mistakes because most of the commercial grids out there, if you're going to do a wall over six feet in height, you're probably going to use a stronger grid. And that means you got to roll it out to the design length and cut it off. So that's a second, that's a, a step that has to be done. In fact, if you roll the grid out the wrong direction, you see you just lost 
about 50% of your strength. So that's a mistake we see done out there almost far too often. So here with biaxial, doesn't matter. You can roll it out, you can roll it parallel because the strength is in both directions. And we just lock it in with that granular material. We call it a rock lock. So with Allen block, when you stack it up, we'll get to the install here in a little bit. You stack it up, you fill it with granular material, and you're ready to go. But now I want to show you this video. All right, This video talks about um, making sure you've got soil reinforcement. So I love this little demonstration. You guys could do this even on uh, if you got a little hands-on area or for contractors if you want to impress your friends. You just took two concrete cylinders, cut the bottoms off it. So those are our temporary forms. Obviously we're building sandcastles. So we wet the sand a little bit so it sticks together. And you can see the high-tech compaction equipment we have. But what we did is in one of them, we just cut some household screen that would kind of represent geogrid. And so we just put those circular shapes one of the uh, columns and you obviously I gave you the punchline uh, for this little story uh, with the beginning shot of this you can see we just compacted and then when you apply even if it's just a small little paver that soil or sand is going to fail because nothing's holding it together but that biaxial grid now blocks that soil together and you can see now it acts as a column of sand instead of individual sand particles so that is the key behind grid. Grid locks the block, the rock, the soil behind together so it acts as one retaining wall instead of the individual components. And that's how you take the same Allen block that is, you know, really 12 inches deep that from a, a two foot high wall to a, a 52 foot high wall. And so in our landscape literature, in our estimating information, if you want to build like a five foot high wall, and you've got something parked on top of it, you're just gonna say it's five feet, and then you're gonna identify what material you're building in. And I always tell homeowners and dealers and contractors that you've got clay, unless you can prove to me that you're in sand, right? So clay is gonna put more pressure on the wall, so you're gonna say it's gonna be three layers of geogrid. Oh, it needs to be three feet long. Well, great. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay my base course. I'm gonna put my first layer of geogrid in. I'm gonna still stack one course at a time, especially with a pattern, but my next layer of geogrid is two courses apart. Then I'm three courses, three layers up, stack another one or two courses. Now I'm five feet up in the air like I wanna be, but I've got a wall that's gonna last a lifetime. And so we always try to get that grid right above that first course, two course spacing with that biaxial grid, and we're ready to go. So any questions, and, and I kind of rhetorical, I know Scott might be typing away in the background here a little bit, but that's the products. What I want to do is pivot now for you guys to think about what questions should you ask your customer to ensure you're going down the right path. So it's really kind of a plan, design, build approach. So yes, yeah, some terminology here, right? We're, we're planning for unlimited opp opportunities or options. Design, we're going to create that comfortable living space and then build or building for life, right? That's the whole goal. And so this is by no means the end all be all planning checklist for you guys. But very often you get like a hand sketch or somebody comes in going, what do I do? So some of the things you got to start looking at is what does the space look like? What are the lot lines? Where are the utilities? You know, even neighbors, I always say uh, neighbors can really make or break a project because, you know, now all of a sudden the dust or whatever it is. So I always kind of ask those questions of them too is, uh, you know, how is this going to impact your neighbors? And do you need to go knock on door to door in advance? Permits are always something you got to ask for them. Every municipality is a little bit different. Chad, right? if I can, if I can jump in, I, I do have a question here in the chat. Um, yeah. Does Allen Block offer engineering? Yeah, great question. We do preliminary designs, and so we've got an engineering team here that uh, we can help you with your concepts, do a, a pretty good estimate and preliminary designs. But Scott's got a network of engineers right there in California, and the state of California is kind of funny about that. But you need to have that PE in California, um, and so we've got a network of engineers that can help us take it to completion as needed. But if you just need to to get the ideas and really kind of fine tune that, we're here for you. I've got uh, a staff of engineers here besides myself that can help you with that. So I hope that answers that, that question, Keith. That Thank sure you. does. Thanks so much. So, sorry to Perfect. Perfect. No, it, that's great. But then we get into the soils and waters. And so let's dive into that a little bit. I mentioned clays, sands. Um, there's a lot of difference between those two. Clay, a lot of people think clay is great. And clay 
in a hot summer day, clay's wonderful, right? It's hard to even dig through it. But clay has what is called cohesion. And what happens to that clay when it starts to rain? Now all of a sudden it starts sticking to your boots and starts moving. So as soon as co the water is introduced, cohesion goes bye-bye. So that's why we can't take that into, into account. So clays, if you grab a handful of that soil and it kind of sticks together, you're probably dealing with a clay. And that's okay. You can work with that, but it's not as desirable as sands. Sands and gravels are perfect. You can usually see those particles because those drain the water. They're easier to compact. So there's a lot of things we like about the sands and gravel out there. And for, uh, for all, all practical purposes, please make sure organic material is recognized. That black material is great to grow things in, but obviously we cannot build on it, right? That is going to degrade over time and all of a sudden we're going to have settlement. So even if you dig your trench and you see still some organic material, you got to keep digging. You cannot build on top of that organic material. But the reason why we need to know the soil particles of the soil is because you guys can even look in your, your yard there at Granite Rock and look at the different piles of stone that you got piled up and, and even some of the other aggregates. What you're witnessing is that natural strength of that of that rock. And you'll some some are higher, some are lower. Clays will be even less because that's that natural strength of that material. Well, what does the retaining wall do? Well, the retaining wall holds up the material that's above that natural strength. So if you look at this, I've got a like a clay material would have a natural strength of this. So everything below this is stable. So the retaining wall holds up this wedge of soil. Think about this. If I got sands and gravels, much higher strength. So that wedge of soil is less. So not only are sands and gravels easier to compact and build and stuff, but they put less pressure on a wall as well. So now here's where I usually talk about our setback. Think about this, this is a vertical wall. What does the setback do? If I have a 12 degree system, all that does is tip back into the hillside even more. And now I've got even less pressure to build. So that's why as an engineer, I love our 12 degree system. But all practical purposes, we love the six degree because I could blend the stability and the real estate all in the same time. All right, so let's talk a little bit about water. Water is your number one enemy. Every time you guys are working with a potential customer, please ask them, are there any potential water sources? You know, as contractors, get out there, find out where that water drainage might come into play because we know that the expectation should not be that the water is going to come up and over this wall. All right, it should not be a waterfall. That could be a, a problem. So just some final graving, grading can really make a difference, but really watch out for those concentrated water sources. Downspouts probably being the biggest enemy out there. Get them in front of the wall, get them diverted through the wall independently, and watch out for the irrigation lines. You know, irrigation lines are great. They wanna water the ground and stuff like that, but you know, this wall right here failed because of a uh, irrigation line and a sprinkler head kind of added more water to it and it ruptured. Now, if you look real close, you'll see something else that uh, happened improperly. And so you look real close, there's this fluorescent orange layer right here, and that is not geogrid. That would be construction fencing. So obviously the contractor did not use the right grid, and so it was a combination of water and improper grid that really kind of was a problem here. And I know Scott is well aware of this project uh, as well. It's right there in Northern California, but water management's the key. You're gonna fill the cores in at least 12 inches with this open graded material. So a cleaned stone. And we like to try to get this toe drain down at the lowest point that still promotes drainage. So if you can go underneath the wall or to a, a dry well or something in front, perfect. But if you can't, no big deal. Just bring in your crushed stone, build that little shelf, and now you've got the way to vent that wall water right through the face. And it's again providing that path of least resistance, handling that water so it does get trapped behind the wall, and you got most of the problems won out there. So again, Granite Rock guys, please ask those qualifying questions about that water source. Now, as far as design, design it's really heights. You know, we talked about the soils and stuff like that, but we need to know how tall that wall is going to be. Because if I've got a, a height, you know, maybe it's a small little two foot high wall, I could probably do it as a gravity wall. And there's soil charts and stuff like this to help you. But if you look at the, the gravity wall, that is just small little walls all the way through this thing, no reinforcement. You just fill the cores and behind with that clean stone. Now, if I've got a slope above the wall or if I got additional height, now all of a sudden I'm gonna need some reinforcement. And that's where it's a combination of what's above the wall and the 
heights that are really going to come into play. And so we like to try to keep things to a three to one here and, and really go ready to go. Now, I mentioned permits, and I want to give you guys a really good uh, trick and tip. Um, 2H, put that in the memory, memory banks. 2H is your design envelope or that zone of influence. So if I'm working with a customer and they've got a two foot high wall, I want to know what's in the first four feet behind that wall. If they're working on a six foot high wall, I want to know what's in the first 12 feet. 2H. 2H is your zone of influence. Those are the questions you need to ask. Why does this come up? Because if I want to do two walls, I got to be separated by that 2H. Otherwise, this upper wall impacts that lower wall. And it's not a problem. We do terraced walls all the time, but we just make sure again, through that preliminary design, stuff like that, that we add the grid to accommodate that additional weight. And where does this come into play? Because permits, homeowners wanna get around the permit. Maybe that permit is a, you gotta pull a permit when it's over four feet. And so they're like, yeah, we'll just do two, three foot high walls and we're set. No, not necessarily. If you're not separated by 2H, that could be a problem because now it's actually kind of one wall structure. Slopes above the wall, we definitely want to make sure those are in, uh, taken into consideration, but we also look at what is the embedment, how much are we going to bury below, and numerally we go about six inches, but if I got a slope below the wall, you're going to want to recommend that they bury another block. In fact, we try to create a five-foot bench in our industry, so some of these General thoughts are not just Allen block. You should see these in maybe some upcoming PK sessions if you get into the install. But from the toe to the exposed surface, we want to bury a little bit more block so we don't undermine or have future problems with that retaining wall. And that needs to be communicated up front with your customers. The last thing they want to think about is they're just looking at the surface, the square footage that is exposed and not thinking about what needs to be buried. And if they got a steep slope, they really should expect to bury another course or two to make sure they've got stability now Ted, surcharges yes Ted, if i could i've got i've got another question here i think probably fit right in here what is the required compaction percentage of the soil and rock needed to be behind the wall yeah great question um i typically go our recommendations is a minimum of 95 percent standard or about 90 percent modified proctor and uh, for those of you guys that don't know what proctor is that's a soil test that they find out the maximum compaction and optimum moisture conditions you need to get to a percentage of that so standard versus modified so our specs talk about 95 percent standard or about 90 percent modified proctor and uh, you do that in and around your wall you're going to minimize that future settlement and you're going to be in pretty good shape and that really holds true with these surcharges you know whether you're a driveway or something of that nature good thank you yeah no no problem okay i'm going to wrap up with a few things as far as we talked about heights and slopes and surcharges and stuff like this i want to get into some of the quick installs whether it's in corners serpentines curves that kind of stuff and some basic installs guys please try to get your customers to think about radiuses radiuses are going to be easier to build for the contractors and quite frankly they're going to be structurally stronger because think about this if i got at these funny angles i'm going to have a vertical seam because they got to cut that all the way up and that's a point of separation so if you can work with your customers and get them to do some radiuses you're going to be miles ahead as far as that successful project goes. But corners are done. We've got a 90 degree corner block. I'm showing a one piece here. Calstone's right in a transition point of they've got uh, bringing back this type of a corner. But really, all we got to do is stack that up rights and lefts, and we start at that corner and work away from it. Uh, inside corners, it's the only time you're going to hear. Um, uh, just wanted to double check something. Um, you're going to see anybody from Allen Block like or Scott talk about removing of that lip. Okay. And so all we're going to do is remove the portion of the lip that's buried so the next course of block can go over the top. But I do like radiuses. Okay. Anytime you can turn that radius, you don't have to make much modification to the block. All you're, you're not cutting it, which simplifies it. We're just knocking the wings off. And we do recommend kind of knocking the wings from back to front. So that way, when you do these outside curves, you just keep the faces nice and tight and you pinch the backside and it kind of turns that radius. And the tightest radius you can make is about four feet with the AB Classics. So keep that in mind, because if you do these radiuses, Every time you step up, that radius gets a little bit tighter. So try to keep your, your bottom radiuses eight feet, nine feet in, in length, and then you'll never have any problems with that. Or if they have some tight ones, what's one thing you can do? 
recommend the Jumbo Junior or the Palermo because that is about a two and a half foot radius. All right, as far as finishing options, it's really customer's choice. You know, we've got the corner options that they can use for returns. You got the half high units, which are fantastic. Now it's an easy way to kind of step up gradually along that wall, or you can feather it off and, and blend it in. But one option you can give them is not even using the caps. They can go ahead and um, use that front lip as a kind of an edger, and they can bring their mulch, they can bring their rock right up to that edge and really expand the look of that, uh, that maybe that elevated flower bed or something of that nature. But let's face it, probably 99.9% .9 of the Allen Block walls out there, we're, we're finishing with that capstone and a nice way to, to finish that up. All right, as far as constructability, just make sure you have the right tools. And so the homeowners, you might need to hold their hand and, and make sure they got the right tools. Contractors, they might probably come into your doorstep to, to get the uh, replacement for that tool, but it's compaction, it's leveling, it's, it's uh, you know, I love the dead below hammers as far as the leveling block. Um, rubber mallets are great, but they bounce on you. So there's things that you can simplify it. I mean, my my weapons of choice are a dead below hammer and a two foot level, and I'll, I'll lay some base, but it's all about base. And if I got some contractors on this, uh, yes, base block, it's the, the most critical point, but you're gonna find out where that wall needs to be. And that's important because the homeowner needs to have a heavy hand in that. Before you do any excavation as a contractor, they need to locate where that wall is and the homeowner needs to give it the final blessing. And then you're gonna excavate for that trench. Now, if you get the question on that trench, think about the block. The block is 12 inches deep, add six inches to both sides. That's your width. That's kind of standard in our industry. Add six inches to the, the depth of the block. So we're gonna be 24 inches wide and then we're going to be about six inches of rock and plus six inches of embedment. So your trench is roughly going to be 24 by 12 as kind of a general rule of thumb for most landscape applications. And then we got to make sure that trench is compacted, right? If we got organic materials or soft soils, you got to get more rock in there. And then you can use that rock, you level that up. And this is where people earn their money, leveling the block front to back, right to left. Once that's in, celebrate a little bit but uh, we got to make sure that base course is level and then as i mentioned we're going to fill the cores in at least 12 inches with that clean stone and then we're going to run that plate compactor right behind the block all right and that way you're consolidating that stone and the backfill material as you go and then just sweep it clean with allen block it's not needed to be on a perfect running bond pattern. In fact, as long as you've got a four inch overlap, we're okay. Um, obviously straight walls, we'd split the difference right in the middle for that perfect running bond. But on your second course, slide things into place, double check, and then ironically, look at our manufacturer's recommendations. We wanna run that plate compactor right on top of the block once it's been backfilled and compacted, right? We're gonna consolidate that stone in the cores as well. And for the contractors that think I might be have a third eye right now, it is definitely the best way to build a wall. You wanna consolidate the rock in the cores just like you do behind. Grid's easy, especially if it's biaxial. Roll it out right beyond the front lip. Stack your next course of blocks. Don't drive or anything on the, on the, on the grid. We wanna keep that kind of clean. We want to make sure it doesn't get damaged, but always think about your compaction starting at your face, going into your hillside. That's the proper way to compact that material, but just be careful. Don't get too close with your heavy equipment. You'll see some isolated bulging on your segment or retaining wall. And so we want to try to keep that heavy equipment basically back three feet. What we're trying to do is maximize that customer, right? You look at this, I always call this the trifecta. You got the paver work, you got the retaining walls to build that flat buildable land, and you give them a little accent with that above grade seating wall, like the multi wall there, and you're in really good shape. But you don't have to do this alone, guys. You know, you guys kind of beat me to this already. We've got the contractor certification class to help train contractors. We even have advanced classes to help train them on how to use some of our tools you do have the engineering team, all right? So love the question that we got there from, from Keith there, but you're, you've got a technical support to help you. And then of course you got allenblock.com. And on allenblock.com, there's a whole slew of information including these estimating tools. And I'm not gonna get into them, but you'll see some repetitive talking points. What is your soil? What's above that wall? What are your heights? And when you hit calculate, you get a nice estimate, um, all the block, all the rock, even the grid. It even goes down to the, how much adhesive that you need to glue things in place. And we're really recommending just gluing the caps, by the way. And we can do that for six foot and under walls or even walls up to 30 feet with a commercial application. And for you guys, 
You could even bring in your pricing and save that, and Scott can take you through this at any point, and it's great. And we have even engineering tools. And then, so if you ask for a preliminary design on a pretty strong wall, we're going to give you. A, uh, we're going to work with AB walls. But what I like about our tools, they work with 3D. And so we t we've got a an app that works within SketchUp, and so all of our apps kind of push it in. So instead of just a two dimensional figure, we're going 3D now. Right, and so when you think about our mobile application, you're just gonna step out, determine what that wall length is, determine the heights, it's gonna give you the estimate, but then it's gonna give you three-dimensional drawings that you can bring in, you can bring in the pillars. And what I like about SketchUp, they've got a whole warehouse of patio furniture, people, landscaping, so you can really start making that. And guys, if you have a customer or if you a contractors are on the call here, if you want us to do this for you, send us the information. I got sales support. So I got engineers that will help you with uh, the technical side of it, but I got a sales support team that's getting pretty good at SketchUp and we can kind of give you some three-dimensional drawings there. But uh, use the resources that you have. In fact, as dealers and contractors, if you go to allenblock.com, there's a portal. And I've circled the dealer login, but you can see the contractor resource there as well. And I always say this is our side door to everything to help you succeed, whether that's uh, past training sessions, whether that's the estimating tools, you name it, it's there 24 seven. And we're only a phone call or an email away. And we're happy to do that. So kind of recapping guys, I went through the products. I hope you guys get a better idea of what products are available through CalStone. I talked about things you need to consider and what questions to ask uh, your customers and, and just kind of keep working with that plan design build approach as we go through this. So that was my presentation. Um, I want to thank you again. And at this time I am all open for, um, questions at this point and if you need me to stop sharing my screen i'm happy to do that um uh, but uh, so if somebody else wants to take over or something but uh, you just let me know if, what questions that came in and and uh, scott and i can field them okay um i'm gonna jump in chad and um this is the a, a commercial break here since granite rock is hosting this and i cannot tell you how impressed i am with with what you did today thank you so much absolutely no invaluable just a ton of information in there um, but i would like to put in a commercial plug that uh, the best clean fill material or clean uh, aggregate material to fill those blocks is uh, granite rock uh, crushed aggregate um, and uh, i'd be happy to give you a slide that you can work in uh, anywhere in our region um, perfect so i do have another question here what is the acceptable pressure movement to an existing wall say 10 feet tall is movement of one inch at the top too much great question love that question somebody's got some research on this there are construction tolerances in our industry um, and that is for every block not just allen block and so uh, there's a couple that are probably pretty good for you to, to kind of memorize one is the overturning plus or minus two degrees OK, and so if I start at six degrees, I can roll over to about four and that's just the tolerance. The one he's talking about is vertical and horizontal alignment. And so that includes the bulging or the settlement that you might see in potentially these walls. And it's really an inch and a quarter over a 10 foot run. OK, and that's a lot when you think about it. I always say if you're building them to construction tolerances, you're probably not having a, a happy customer. Right. So but we do know these walls are flexible just because they move a little bit doesn't mean that stability wise they're going to fail. So that's why these tolerances are into place. So to answer his question, we actually say an inch and a quarter over a 10 foot run. Right. And then a follow up. Can you show up a block? And if so, mm -hmm. what's the maximum height? Yeah, any of the contractors out there, you know that you got to shim a block. You, you know, you don't have the mortar bed between them. I personally, if you're asking for my opinion, I love asphalt shingles. They're about a sixteenth of an inch in height. You can tear them to whatever size you need. They don't compress. They don't degrade. So I love asphalt shingles. Uh, and so I always tell the guys through our contractor certification class, you know, go dumpster diving if somebody is uh, tearing off an old roof because they don't have to be new asphalt shingles and just throw a, a couple couple sheets in the, in the back of your truck and then you can just tear off what you need but you do want something that's not going to compress and not going to degrade over time so that's why i don't like wood shims i don't like something like that and uh so something that's a little bit more of a plastic but uh, or asphalt and that's why i like those shingles so hopefully well, you can use brilliant that. inside tip i love that that's great yeah. scott julian do you have something you'd like to add 
Yeah, well, I just wanted to bring, I guess I'll put my camera on too. Everyone's attention, I, we spoke about uh, the 12 degree block, the AB stones and the classics. We, Calstone has the AB stones in, in um, a solid gray and a solid tan. And our classics come in those solid gray and solid tan colors too. But we also, in the classics, we have a gray charcoal tan, a brown beige charcoal, and a tan brown charcoal. And all those colors are available in our Euro Europa series. The blended colors are, and the blended colors are available also in the multi wall. What else? Uh, did you learn something from Chad's presentation today, Scott? Uh, oh, yeah. Well, I was going to say the, the finding those asphalt shingles, I've gone to supply yards, roofing supply yards, and they, a lot of times they have that where they toss them out if the bundles are broken. And I've gotten those for free plenty of times. So I, but I do like the asphalt shingles when you're shimming. It's a, it's a great tool. Great. Um, what else would you gentlemen like to impart? What more pearls of wisdom? Yeah, if, if you're giving an engineer the, the floor, I'm going to kind of revisit the water management um, just because that is where we see most of the problems. So the Granite Rock staff, please ask a couple qualifying questions on water management to, to anybody that walks through the door, contractors that are on the line here. I always joke around that you should do a pre-construction meeting during the pouring rain to find out where that water is coming from, where it's going. Because again, um, and I hate to sound like a broken record, but if you handle your water right, you have just eliminated about 75% of the problems out there. And so when, whenever you're talking about retaining walls, check to see where that water is going and coming and uh, provide that path. And hopefully that path isn't stuck behind your retaining wall. Yeah, brilliant. And, and I'd like to add, we also have the, the standardized engineering for six foot and under walls available. So the, the walls like Chad talks about that, they don't have a slope below the wall, but they have up to a three to one slope above it. And then you are parking, uh, you know, small vehicles like passenger vehicles on top. We have standardized engineering that uh, any other Granite Rock or contractors can get a hold of me and I can guide them in the right direction to have those available uh, for some of the jobs that are going to need some engineering. And then the other thing I wanted to mention is that all the Granite Rocks around have displays that show the products, the Allen Block products, so they can see what is out there and show their customers the color, the different color variations we have. Okay, we've got another one for you, Scott. Um, does Calstone have any future plans to carry the new AB wall line? Oh, I like plans? that question. Yeah. What's that now? <laughs> I like that question. <laughs> yeah, uh, there, there's talk about that. We're, we're going through some, some, uh, I guess, manufacturing pains right now, being able to keep up with uh, the demand. And uh, so we're working on bringing something, different products in, in the future. But at the moment, uh, we're going to just try to supply what the customers are demanding at the moment. So a little bit of follow up on that and Scott spot on right now uh, production is key. Uh, there's a lot of work out there, which is great for our industry. But what I would ask the Granite Rock team and, and even the contractors that are on here, um, obviously we know customers have those needs and wants. And so if you're getting a lot of demand for that new look, like they're coming in saying, hey, do you have the Aztec or do you have this? Do you have that? Let Scott know. Scott is all about more products. I mean, he loves selling it. Don't get me wrong, but he's got to go back to the, the manufacturing guys. And so that's the, the ammunition he needs that, hey, one of our biggest customers continues to get requests for this particular product. Let's let's see what we can do. So um, I guess just keep a mental note of how often that comes up in conversations. So Scott, I've got a pretty pointed question for you here. Okay. Uh, will you be bringing in the old AB caps? We're looking at possibly bringing those back. It's it's going through some transitions right now, um, but I'm looking for positives or negatives on that. I, I've been presenting both of those already. So whoever has that, please get in touch with me so I can convey those to the powers to be. <laughs> Because they're they are actually looking at th that and uh, that corner. We've got a, a two piece corner now, and it's looking like we're going to probably go back to the one piece corner because there's so much demand for the one piece corner. 
Um, so the the cap is on the on the decision block right now, so to speak. Nice, well done. Okay, um, any other questions out there? Last chance, guys. Does AB still offer in-house two-day training for dealers? Yes. As soon as we can get through this worldwide pandemic, we call it Dealer ABU. Um, we will definitely be offering it. We miss them, to be perfectly honest. And so, yeah, we will. Um, we're actually even thinking about putting something together for this fall, since obviously the first quarter came and went, and that's typically when we do them. Uh, so we might even offer a class here yet in 2021. But 2022, we are definitely planning on having our dealer Allen Block University. So uh, we miss you guys, and and actually look forward to having you back. Yeah, we miss seeing you guys too. So fingers crossed on that. And uh, um, with that, I don't see any more questions. I'm going to toss it to Ernie to uh, wrap up. Thanks. Sam. Yeah, thanks, guys. Yeah, um, so to close, uh, I just want to say thank you to everybody who's joined in on today's uh, product knowledge seminar class. Uh, we appreciate your participation. We will be reaching out to you uh, with free Grand Rock swag. Uh, I also want to personally thank Chad and Scott for being here, you know, virtually and really kicking off our PK seminar series. Uh, you guys did an excellent job. Just a couple more people I want to thank. Jackie Serrano and Keith Severson. Thank you for the backup. Do appreciate that. Uh, please join us next week for uh, Granite Creek. That's a uh, April 22nd between 10 a.m. 11 a.m. same Microsoft team application. Uh, lastly, I do want to mention that you'll be sent a survey link out to you. We do appreciate if you get a moment to fill that out so we can use your feedback to improve on uh, future seminars here. So thank you everybody. Uh, that concludes today's product knowledge seminar on Allen Block. Uh, be safe and rock on. Thank you. <laughs>